so the order is passed on 1972 and the the effect it came to effect from 1973 maybe property it may be goods it may be vehicle or it may be human lives so it is very dangerous fire is very very dangerous once the goods reach to american port that means in one particular oh that insurance will going to cover the risk of our product the insurance company will going to pay 10000 rupees and if it is 50000 insurance company will pay 50000 Hello my dear students I am your age sir faculty department of commerce and management vidya ashram first grade college mysuru a temple of excellence my dear students in today's session i am going to handle the subject management of service for the second sem bba the topic is banking and insurance in the previous session we were discussing on life insurance types of life insurance and what are the advantages disadvantages and also other topics and history regarding the life insurance and in this session we are going to discuss on general insurance and introduction on general insurance see general insurance means apart from life insurance if any types of insurance you did so that is called as general insurance it may be marine that means transporting goods from sea port so we need insurance any accident happened during the transportation so that that insurance covers the damages happened by the accidents through transportation through sea and also transportation through railway transportation through roadways so any types of transportation or on goods or apart from life insurance any transportation it may be on goods or it may be in any articles or it may be any other sector or industrial sector insurance these all comes under general insurance now let's go to the history or how general insurance developed in india in the 1972 with the passing of the general insurance business nationalization act so in the 1972 the government of india passed a act called general insurance nationalization act nationalization means what see converting private sector to public sector so converting private sector to public sector as a government sector that's called nationalization the general insurance business was nationalized with effect from 1st january 1973 so the order is passed on 1972 and the the effect it came to effect from 1973 the general insurance business was nationalized in the year of 1973 and it is accepted in 1973 Let's go to the next slide. Next one, more than hundred and seven insurance companies amalgamated, merged together, and formed four main insurance companies as a general insurance. So these are backed or these are backed by the government of India. So in general insurance, more than hundred and seven companies were there as a private sector. So once all the companies nationalized, so they made four main insurance companies. what are the four main insurance companies first one national insurance company limited this is one of the general insurance company which provides insurance for the general types of goods and other sector next one the new india assurance company limited so this is also one of the other general insurance company where it provides it may be vehicle insurance or it may be goods and also fire insurance and also different types of insurance next one oriental insurance company this is also one of the insurance company which was nationalized under the government of india act and also united india insurance company these are the four important insurance general insurance company which were under the government of india next one the general insurance corporation of india was incorporated as a company in 1971 and it commenced business on january 1st 1973 again the one more company called the general insurance corporation of india which was incorporated that means established and registered under the government of india on 1971 and this company commenced business from january 1st 1973 
Next one. Basically, there are four types of general insurance. See, under the general insurance company, we have four types of or four categories of insurance. What are the four categories of insurance? Let us see. Basically, there are four types of general insurance stated below based on the number of different kinds of policies hedging against the various kind of risk are available in the market these days. See, according to the needs of the market, according to the different types of the risk on the base of risk, on the base of goods, so general insurance are providing different types of insurance which are having different types of benefit. So, for example, if it is a fire insurance, so if the, the goods destroyed by fire, so those goods comes under fire insurance. If it is a vehicle, so accident, if you met with an accident and the vehicle damage that comes under accident insurance policy and also if in case goods destroyed or damaged through the transportation that comes to the motor insurance policy and also the goods destroyed or damaged in the sea transportation or marine transportation that comes under marine insurance. Let's go to the first one fire insurance. Fire insurance is a insurance policy which covers the damage under any fire it may be goods or it may be vehicles so any usually will go for goods it may be you no know, in the storage point or it may be in golden for example the goods destroyed because of fire or it be, because of you no know, uh, electrical fire also one of the causes and also next point is marine insurance marine insurance means goods transported through sea so, if any goods damaged because of the accidents in the transportation of sea or in the during the transportation of the OH, then marine insurance comes to help in order to give the benefit or in order to give the amount which was no which was happened to loss in the damage. Next one, motor insurance. Next point motor insurance now what do you mean by motor insurance or it is also called as vehicle insurance see any accident happened for example while the purchase of any vehicle will go for motor insurance so you will be you will be knowing about these points so while purchasing your bike we have to pay the insurance for that it may be motor insurance or it may be vehicle insurance also there are so many insurance policy regarding the motor insurance why we need motor insurance what happens if we did not pay why the government has you know is having the strict rules regarding the motor insurance now let's understand motor insurance with example for example a boy a is a boy going in a bike okay so again he is going with maximum speed in his bike so he met with an accident because of lorry so lorry made an accident to him and he died the the a this person died but the lorry driver is a poor person the case goes to court and the court order 10 lakh rupees compensation 10 lakh rupees compensation to this person nominee or the family members of this person but the a driver lorry driver made an accident is a poor person let's assume b is the lorry driver so b is the person is very poor he cannot pay the 10 lakh rupees to the family of a then where he has to go that's why both this lorry driver or the owner of the lorry also has to pay the vehicle insurance and the mr a also has to pay the vehicle insurance then the insurance company which b has paid the or is paying the insurance that company will going to pay this 10 lakh rupees to family members of a that's why we need insurance policy for every vehicle so i hope you are clear that's why the government is making strict rules regarding the insurance vehicle insurance so if any accident happened it may be life for threat or it may be damage of vehicle so any type of amount can be claimed by the motor insurance so both the party should be having a motor insurance in order to claim for example if mr a is not having the insurance policy on vehicle so he will not get the 10 lakh rupees even though if b is not having a 
life insurance policy, motor insurance policy, then it is an offense from the part of B. So he has to pay the you know, fine also for that according to the court rules. Next, going to the health insurance. Nowadays, health insurance policy is getting famous. Why? So we are in uncertainty every day. We don't know where we will meet with an accident or where what happens to our life or which type of disease comes or new disease like corona or it may be like pandemic they are coming so and also we are not in a position to pay the bill hospitals bills it may be very huge bill it is a burden for any person to pay the bill for example mr a is a person who met with an accident or because of any disease he has hospitalized but since he is not earning now so how to pay the bill so his family members are unable to pay the hospital bill it may be we don't know how many lakhs it will become so that's why if he has paid any premium on the or if he has taken any health insurance policy that company is going to pay for whatever the health expenses or health expenditure of the a it may be operation or it may be any other treatment so all this type of treatment or care taken by the health insurance policy company so that's why we need health insurance next one miscellaneous insurance it may be regarding any goods for example you will be having you know gold or it may be you will be having you know a, a statue in the museum or also in other items in the museum so those things will come under miscellaneous expenses so all the goods which are which cannot be covered under main for insurance will goes to miscellaneous insurance policies let's go to the fire insurance so fire is an hazardous to human life as well as property so it may be property it may be goods it may be vehicle or it may be human life so it is very dangerous fire is very very dangerous next one loss of property by fire is covered under the life insurance so any loss or any damage happened because of fire this type of damages can be claimed by fire insurance policy so if you have fire insurance policy any damages happen you can directly claim to the company the company is going to pay the loss amount so that you can transfer your risk with the goods or with the fire accident to the company so taking insurance means what taking the or transferring our risk or hedging our risk to the company so for that we have to pay the premium why we are paying the premium because the company will going to take our risk that's why we have to pay the premium it may be every month every three months or every six months according to the type of the policy next one a fire insurance policy provides protection strictly against fire so mainly against fire only the damages happened because of the fire only then the fire insurance company will going to pay the amount not because of it may be any other types of accidents or it may be you no know, loss because of you no know, theft or loss because of any other types of damages so only because of fire only this company going to pay the amount next one fire the general insurance act tariff recommends the form of the contact in which a fire insurance is to be written so what do you mean by that the general insurance policy has given the condition and also given the strict rules on what type of fire can be accepted or what type of fire accidents can be claimed under the fire insurance policy now let's see what are the no condition or what are the which type of accident fire accident can be claimed under the fire insurance first one a fire insurance policy covers fire so any fire accidents lightning so it may be the goods damaged because of lightning also can be covered under fire insurance next one explosion so it may be bomb explosion or it may be other type of explosion happened because and also because of explosion the goods destroyed by fire then also that can be acceptable storm so goods destroyed by storm also acceptable by fire insurance it may be cyclone also typhoons hurricane next one tornado tornado it is also types of tornado in america they will call it as a tornado which comes under as a cyclone next one landslide 
right strike malicious and terrorism damages aircraft damage etc so if it may be terrorism also because of terrorism if your goods or if your vehicles you no know, damaged then also you can go for fire insurance it may be typhoon also or it may be cyclone it may be landslide or it may be any type of it may be riot also because of riot you may be you have seen in the news so if any riots happened what you no know, a group of you no know, youngsters will go to the you no know, any vehicle and they will burn that vehicle so this type of any mischievous activities happen or it may be any loss happened those things will be covered under the fire insurance policy next one what are the types of fire insurance first one valued policy what do you mean by valued policy let's see they are the expectation in the fire insurance so let's go into they don't know the actual value of the goods so they will expect the value of goods next one under valued policy the value declared in the policy is the amount the insurance will have to pay to the insured in the event of total loss irrespective of the actual value of the loss it may be so for example if i am taking 1 lakh rupees insurance this is the amount so in the policy document so it may be 50000 actual loss is the maybe 50000 so it may be 50000 or it may be 1 lakh 50000 so even though the actual loss is more than the policy amount or it may be lesser than the policy amount the insurance company will going to pay exact 1 lakh rupees this is the meaning of the value policy that means it is a expected value only they will assume some this much of value or this much of loss can be happen for that amount the insured person will going to pay the premium next one specific for policy what do you mean by specific policy under this policy the insurer undertakes to make good the loss to the insured up to the amount specified in the policy what do you mean by that up to the amount specified in the policy means what see they will specify the amount okay it is 1 lakh rupees is specified in the document of the policy up to 1 lakh rupees only he can claim so any loss by fire up to 1 lakh rupees he can fire but not more than the 1 lakh rupees if it is 10000 loss he can claim 10000 loss here even though it is 10000 or 1 lakh or 1 lakh 50000 the government the insurance company will going to pay 1 lakh rupees exactly but here it is not like that it may be 10000 loss the insurance company will going to pay 10000 rupees and if it is 50000 insurance company will pay 50000 70000 also the company will provide 70000 rupees and also if it is exceeds 1 lakh rupees then insurance company will pay only 1 lakh rupees not more than 1 lakh rupees this is the meaning of this specific policy next point average policy what do you mean by average policy see under fire insurance policy containing the average clause the insured is liable for such proportion of the loss as the value of the uncovered property bears to the whole property what do you mean by that see for example i am taking a insurance policy worth of 1 lakh rupees as a average policy if the loss is if the actual loss is 50000 so i am going to get 50000 only okay not 1 lakh rupees at the same time if the loss is 75000 i am going to get 75000 only but if the loss exceeds 1 lakh rupees if the loss exceeds 1 lakh rupees i am going to get only the average amount so for example what is the 50% is the let's take the average amount average loss going to applicable so if it is the actual loss is more than 1 lakh rupees then the insured person only get the average amount from the insurance company not the full amount that is the meaning of average company if it's if the actual loss is below the average amount this is the amount actual exact amount mentioned in the policy if the loss 
is up to 1 lakh rupees then we will get the amount we will get the amount what is insured but if it is the if the actual loss is more than the 1 lakh rupees then the average amount will be provided by the insurance policy company next one floating policy what do you mean by floating policy a floating policy is used for covering fluctuating stock of goods held in different lot for one premium with every transaction of sale or purchase the quantities of goods kept at different places fluctuate it is difficult for the owner to take the property for specific amount the best way is to take a take out a floating policy for all the stock of goods see i'm a dealer i'm a business person i'm a dealer so i will be having lakhs or lakhs to get the worth of goods in my golden i'm having so many goldens in maybe bangalore market or it may be karnataka entire karnataka market or other parts of the country market i'm having goldens in more than 10 or 20 places so in this situation so in every golden the worth of goods or the stock of goods will be fluctuating so while taking the insurance policy we have to mention the exact amount what is the exact amount we are going to take the policy but while the goods is fluctuating or sometimes the goods will be increasing or the stock will be increasing sometimes the stock will be decreasing every day rotation will be there so goods will be coming into the godam and at the same time goods will be going out of the godam so in this situation i will take the fluctuate policy where the approximate amount so of the total goods so it may be i may be having 10 godans so approximate value of the 10 godans will be considered as a insured policy amount insurance policy amount then i have to pay the premium for that and if if any case whatever the loss happened in any one godan the insurance company will going to pay the amount that's what fluctuating policy fluctuating policy is a policy even though my stock or the value of the insurance is fluctuating i am going to pay the premium on the same type of premium for every month or every year this is what fluctuating policy that is what it is difficult to difficult for the owner to take the policy for a specific amount so it is it is very difficult to you know, tell exact specific amount so what is the actual worth of goods so it will be fluctuating or it may be increasing or it may be decreasing so in this scenario i can take the fluctuating policy next point reinstatement policy what do you mean by reinstatement policy that is here replacing the goods for if in case any goods destroyed the company instead of paying the money so it will replace the product or replace the goods for example if the home damaged or if the house damaged by the fire so the insurance company completely destroyed the house and or destroyed the house and build a new house it means replacing the goods next one in such policy the insurance the insurer has a right to reinstate or or replenish the property destroyed instead of paying the compensation to the insured so instead of paying the amount what they will do they will replace the product next point consequential loss policy what do you mean by consequential loss policy let's see sometimes the insured has to suffer a greater financial loss on account of dislocation of business caused by fire such considerable loss to the insured is not covered by the ordinary life policy or fire policy in order to cover such losses by fire a consequential loss policy has been introduced what do you mean by that see i'm a small business owner okay i'm a retail shop owner because of fire my retail shop destroyed so or my retail sh shop destroyed because of fire so uh, my loss is 10 lakh rupees okay so i had a insurance policy for 10 lakh rupees so insurance company will going to pay the actual loss but after my shop destroyed i have to you know relocate my business to other part of the you know street or other parts of the city so in this time during this time i may you know met with an loss i may met with a loss because of you no know, 
dislocation of my business i have to move my business or i have, I have to transfer my business from one place to another place and whatever the loss happened to my business after so you know transferring from one place to another place other another place that loss can be covered by this type of consequential loss policy so other fire insurance policy will only covers the 10 lakh rupees the whatever the damage happened because of fire but whatever the losses happened after the fire because of the no moving my business or my location of the business from one part to another part whatever the loss happened to my business because of the no moving from one part to another part or shifting from one part to another part of the city then the loss can be covered by consequential loss policy next one comprehensive policy what do you mean by comprehensive policy let's look at the point this policy covers the risk of the fire arising out of any cause that is civil commotion lightning riots theft labor disturbance and strike etc so this type of policy will cover what are the events what are those first one civil commotion it may be any strike or it may be any no damage happened to the, your vehicle or it may be your business property because of fire happened because of riots because of any strikes or because of any other illegal activity or it may be riots or it may be theft because of theft for example gold uh, goldsmiths are also gold shop will go for this type of insurance where they will in their store they will be having so much of worth gold so if it is if the gold loss because of theft then they can come to the this type of policy and also labor disturbance what do you mean by labor disturbance see for example if the factory the workers of the factory will go for strike for one month or two months though then the owner of the factory will have to face the loss then they can go for this type of insurance where whatever the loss happened during the strike that type of loss can be claimed by this type of insurance policy next one a blanket policy what do you mean by bl blanket policy so blanket means what covering whole thing blanket means covering whole body no so blanket will cover the whole body like that the blanket policy will cover whole total loss in a company so it may be lost by fire or it may be lost by theft or it may be lost by you know, riots or it may be lost by because of strike and other activity so all types of insurance it may be fire it may be accident because of accident also the goods destroyed so all types of policy will be comes under blanket policy so this policy is issued to cover all the fixed and current assets of an enterprise by one insurance see i am having a production unit where i will be having number of machineries and also workers working number of or 100 members or 200 members are working there so in there i will be having so many units of machine like this so all machines are arranged so it may be different types of buildings in a one location i'll be having so many buildings and in every building i will be having numbers of machineries so whatever the fire accidents happened in any one building so we can take a blanket policy to the whole business covering all the building and all the machineries in every building and also other lives comes under this types of insurance so it is a blanket policy which covers all the losses of assets it may be building or it may be because of fire or it may be accident by machinery so all types of accidents or fire will be covered under this type of blanket policy next one sprinkler leakage policy what do you mean by sprinkler leakage policy it covers the losses arising out of the water leakage from the sprinklers which are set up to extinguish fire what do you mean by that see after fire accident happened the all the sprinkler will open and they will sprinkles the water and also after the fire insurance will cover the whatever the damage happened by the fire but whatever the damage happened by the sprinkler of water in every business they will be having sprinkler connection for all the parts of the building so in during that period if any type of damage happened so they will be having you know expensive machinery it may be computers or it may be any other you no know, very delicate machines will be having if the sprinklers 
sprinkles the water that there is a chances for damage of that particular you know, computer it may be delicated products or delicated machinery so if such losses happen then this type of policy is going to help next one next point declaration policy what do you mean by declaration policy in this policy a trader takes out a policy for the maximum value of stock which may be expected to hold during the year at a fixed date each month the insured has to make a declaration regarding the actual value of stock at risk on the on that date on the basis of such declaration the average amount of the stock at the risk in the year is calculated what do you mean by that see every year the stock in the golden will be you know in the rotation it will be increasing or maybe decreasing but i had to declare which is the highest or which is the highest stock in my golden or what is the actual highest actual worth of stock for example so in the month in the january month i will be having so 100 units so in the february we will be having 200 units in the march we will be having 300 units again april i am having 200 units may i will be having 500 units so these are the units of goods we are having in the godown or as a stock we are having so like that we will be having up to the december so out of 12 months in which month we are having the highest value of our highest worth of goods that amount has to be declared by the policy holder to the company on this basis on the basis basis average amount so 500 divided by that means 250 so the average stock will be 250 on this amount we can take the insurance policy that's what the declaration policy the only average amount the highest stock of the the average amount of the highest value of stock will be taken as the declaration and also value of the policy next let's go to the types of marine insurance what do you mean by marine insurance so it is a marine insurance is a if the goods are damaged because of the sea transportation or voyage transportation then marine insurance going to help or marine insurance going to pay the losses Now, what do you mean by that let's see see if you look at the picture see here so it is a big ship the goods in which, which is in ship so going to destroy because of the accident so whatever the accident or whatever the actual loss happened to the goods will be covered under the marine insurance So let's go to the meaning. Marine insurance covers the loss or damages of ship, cargo, terminals, and any transport or cargo by which the property is transferred, acquired, or held between the points of origin and the final destination. See, I am sending goods from Indian ports to America ports. So U.S. port. so my goods are trans has to transport through oh or through sea from india to us so if any accident happened in this duration or in this transportation so whatever the loss happens to the company or to the owner of the property that you no know, amount will be claimed by the insurer by the insurance company next one under the marine insurance we have so many types what are those first one oh policy what do you mean oh policy under this type of policy the subject matter is insured against the risk in respect of a particular voyage from a port of departure to port of destination what do you mean by that see my port of departure is india and the destination is america so this is only in this in one transaction or in one transportation whatever the loss happens so that amount will be claimed in the oh policy so this only once the once goods moves from india to american port so this policy will going to end once the goods reach to american port that means in one particular oh that insurance will going to cover the risk of our product next one time policy so what do you mean by that see voyage policy will gives the insurance cover for only one voyage or one single transportation 
but it is a time policy under time policy for example goods transported from india to america for three months any goods transport from india to america or america to india for three months the insurance company going to cover the risk so any number of times you can you no know, send the goods to from india to america or america to india so n number of times in the this stipulated time or it may be one year three months six months or it may be three years or five years during this time of period so any transportation or any transportation of goods happened between india and america this company or this type of insurance going to help the insurer it is one under which the insurance is affected for specified period of time usually not exceeding 12 months so not exceeding 12 months means what within one year that's why i we uh, give an example of it may be three months or it may be six months eight months so during this eight months or during or within this 12 months whatever the transportation happened from india to america or america to india that particular good good so if any accident happened in this within 12 months that amount will be claimed by the this policy holder next one mixed policy it is a mixture of time policy and oh policy so it is a mixture what do you mean by that it is a one under which the insurance contract is entered into for a certain time period and for a certain oh or a oh's like kolkata to new york for a period of one year what do you mean by that see it is a mixture of oh policy and time policy for example i am sending goods from indian port to us port so it is one transaction from india to us for 12 months so any transaction from india to us not for other country if i send india to china then it is not acceptable acceptable under then it is not acceptable under oh or mixed policy only had to send the goods from india to us this type of transaction can be accepted under oh policy or mixed policy next one valued policy what do you mean by valued policy it is one under which the value is subject matter insured is a specified on the face of the policy itself the value which is agreed upon is called the insured value so so they will not provide actual value of the goods or they will not provide actual value of the loss occurred by the fire they will only fix the value for example let's 10 lakh rupees even though the worth of the goods or actual cost of the goods may be more than 10 lakh rupees or lesser than 10 lakh rupees but the insurance policy holder will go for or will opt for to pay 10 lakh rupees then the insurance company will receive the premium according to the 10 lakh rupees and if in case any loss happened the company will pay 10 lakh rupees even though the loss is more than 10 lakh or lesser than 10 lakh rupees next one unvalid policy it is the policy under which the value of subject matter is insured is not fixed at the time of affecting insurance but has to be ascertained whenever the subject matter is lost or damaged so during the in this type of insurance the value of the insurance policy or the worth of insurance policy is not fixed while taking the insurance policy but this type of the value will be or the actual loss of the product will be valid during the time of loss or during during time of accidents then only the value will be calculated not at the time of taking the policy next point open policy what do you mean by open policy let's look at the meaning an open policy is issued for a period of 12 months so it, the open policy will be provided for only for 12 months and all consignments clear during the period are covered by the insurer this form of insurance policy is suitable for big companies that have regular shipments so for example in a oh policy it gives only for one particular distance okay or one particular country or one particular port but if in a in time policy it gives only during the some period or maybe 12 months within 12 months six months three months and it may be 10 months now what do you mean by this type of policy see 
in voyage policy the voyage policy only provides the insurance for particular voyage in time policy it provides insurance no our insurance cover only within the 12 months but in open policy even though it is 12 months it is a for one particular business so for example a is conducting business is having so many business in different parts of the country for example in chennai port also is working in andhra or visakhapatnam port also is working and also in other parts so any number of business you will be having shipments you, you are conducting but so all the shipments or all the you no know, transaction transportation will come under single policy within 12 months then it's called as open policy next one floating policy what do you mean by floating policy let's look at the point a merchant who is a regular shipper of goods can take out a floating policy to avoid botheration and wastage of time involved in taking new policy for every shipment see for example i am a merchant i am conducting my business throughout the year so during this time so whatever the transaction or whatever the shipments happened in the particular year so all types of shipment will be covered under single policy that's called as floating policy at the end of every each you know, transportation the actual cost of the goods or actual cost of the insurance or the actual cover of the insurance will be changing but the policy is same but the actual cover of the policy will be changing according to the that particular transaction or that particular transportation of goods next one block policy what do you mean block policy this policy covers other risk also in addition to the marine risk when goods are to be transported by the ship to the place of destination a single policy known as block policy may be taken to cover all the risk block policy means all types of risk for example during the transportation of goods in the ocean or in the sea it may be catch up with the fire so that now then also then this policy will cover that fire insurance policy also because of goods are in transit that's why the block policy will also covers other types of risk like theft or it may be so not only the goods destroyed by transportation or the marine even though it covers the marine insurance other types of fire or other types of theft or it may be strike or it may be other different parts of the insurance or the different parts of the losses in the business will be covered under the black policy next one my dear students in the next session we are going to discuss about the chapter 3 management of hotel industry till then thank you so much